What's going on everybody? Dato Doya here with another Dragon Ball Fighters theme video, and this time we're going to be covering zoning in Dragon Ball Fighters and how you as a player can get around it. First things first, we have to discuss what zoning is. If you're new to fighting games, you may know zoning better as spamming. If you've ever been playing a fighting game with one of your friends or somebody online, and they just kept throwing fireballs at you to keep you away from them, then you've already experienced zoning and the effects it has on people. One of the reasons zoning works so well is because it aggravates the opponent. They feel helpless, almost as if they didn't even get to play the game. So as the game continues, they start to get more and more reckless with their movements. They start mashing away at their buttons, hoping that one of their moves connects. But of course, oftentimes that leaves them the most open, and a good zoner will just take that opportunity to hit you with a real combo, most likely finishing the game. I know that when I was first starting fighting games, nothing made me angrier than going against someone that I thought was spamming a certain move. And part of that's because I knew I could beat them if only I knew how to stop that one move or that one tactic. And because I faced that challenge as a player myself, I wanted to share some ways to beat zoning in Dragon Ball Fighters. Maybe in the process of learning how to beat zoning, you'll discover a new appreciation for it as well. So without further ado, let's get right into the tips for dealing with zoning. Alright, the first tip is both the easiest and the hardest one to follow and that's remembering to stay calm during the match. It's so easy to get angry when you feel you're being robbed of a match, but that anger is only gonna make it harder for you to win. I don't think there's really a trick to staying calm either, so it's something you're gonna have to figure out for yourself. Just remember to take breaks if you feel yourself getting really mad, and to try to remind yourself that you're playing this game to have fun. The second tip is to always know what your options are when you're dealing with certain types of moves. I'll go over a few by pausing the game when Cell fires a Kamehameha, and then discuss what the other player could have done. Alright, so we're looking at Cell versus Boo, and Cell is beginning to fire a Kamehameha. Let's go over a few of the options Boo has right now. Boo can double jump, avoid the Kamehameha altogether, and land safely on the ground. That's not really the most optimal option though, as Boo can just jump, perform an air dash, and come down on Cell with a move allowing him to start a combo. Boo also has the option to just block by holding back on his controller. After he blocks, he should be free to fire a beam of his own before Cell can get off another one. And because Boo has two meters, he could also opt to use the Vanish attack by pressing medium and heavy together, allowing him to teleport behind Cell and kick him. If he was in Sparking Blast mode, he could also press medium and heavy and hold it and not kick Cell and opt to go for a different combo instead. And you're going to see because this is the trial mode they gave to Xbox instead of online mode, Thanks Bandai. He opts to do none of that and just takes the hit. Now this is most likely the situation people want answers for. If they get hit by a Kamehameha, what options do they have? Boo's able to tech long before Cell's able to recover from his animation fully. Cell then begins to fire another Kamehameha. Right now, Boo could either vanish like we covered before, or he could just stick to the basics and block. Usually this is what you want to do, and it's what the bot ops the deal for here. Now you're going to see that after he blocks, Boo's able to recover much faster than Cell. Blocking has put Boo back in a good situation. So really, if you're ever in trouble and don't know what to do, instead of just clicking buttons randomly and hoping something works, just hold back on your stick. The third and final tip involves the other projectile type in the game, Key Blast. Key Blasts are special in the way that you can just super dash through them without getting hurt. The Key Blast will just bounce off of your character. So if you're getting zoned by Key Blast, and then are calling in any beam assist to help them, then you're free to just super dash and hit them with a full combo. That's about all I had to say for this video and the very basics of avoiding getting zoned out in Dragon Ball Fighters. It's a very rushed down heavy game, so it shouldn't be too hard. That said, the game isn't fully out yet, so we don't know how good zoning will truly be until the game is in our hands. If you want to let me know something you struggled with in the open beta, feel free to do so in the comments below. I'll be down there as always. And while you're down there, if you like the video and the channel, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm Dr. Doya, and I'll see you in the next one.